This podcast is the property of the Half Blood Princesses. I'm Demi. I'm Jess. The story will begin in a flourish. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 14 of the Half Blood Princesses. We're so excited to be here again. Yes, we are. And if you haven't followed us on social media, what are you doing with your lives? We have Twitter and Instagram at HB Princesses Pod and Facebook and YouTube at The Half-Blood Princesses, a Harry Potter podcast. So go check us out. Also, we have a voicemail line at 412-228-5435. So leave us a voicemail and we'll feature it in a future episode. Speaking of voicemails, we have one from our friend Maddie. Let's hear it. I am so thankful for you guys. Your podcast is just my life. I love it. Y'all are so awesome. And if I may, I'd love to see y'all do a episode on Fox the Phoenix. And also, you have brought up the number seven a lot in your past episodes. So, I would be very interested to see y'all do an episode on number seven and how many times it occurs throughout the series. Again, love y'all. Y'all are awesome. And I can't wait till the next episode. Thank you so much, Maddie. We love hearing from you. And Fox the Phoenix is definitely on our list of topics to cover in the podcast. And also, we were just thinking about having a bonus episode featuring the number seven. So definitely stay tuned for that. And now, to me, what's the topic of episode 14? Our topic is Felix Felices, and this episode is coming out at a perfect time because St. Patrick's Day is only a few days away. So now, let's get into our quote. It's time for Quick Quotes Corner. Today's quote comes from Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, chapter 9, The Half-Blood Prince. This is the passage that comes after Michael Corner asks Slughorn if he's ever taken Felix Felices. Twice in my life, said Slughorn, once when I was 24, once when I was 57, two tablespoonfuls taken with breakfast, two perfect days. He gazed dreamily into the distance. Whether he was play-acting or not, thought Harry, the effect was good. After Professor Slughorn says this, he announces to the class that he will be awarding a bottle of Felix Felicis to the student who does the best job at creating the draft of living death. So, obviously, as a student in the class, I would feel super motivated to do my absolute best work because who wouldn't want to win this? Professor Slughorn isn't my favorite teacher, but let's be honest, using the token system in class to motivate students and reward good work is actually a really good teaching strategy. I've had many teachers who did this when I was in school, and albeit I didn't win a bottle of Lucky Potion, but still. Harry winning the Felix Felicis is really important for the plot of Half-Blood Prince. He definitely gets help from Snape's potions book, but nevertheless, Harry knowing that this potion is on the line makes him try his hardest and makes him feel motivated for the first time in a potions class. I feel like this is really important because Harry doesn't really do his best work in school. He kind of just skates by and asks Hermione for help, but except in defense against the dark arts, because that's when he really excels. But especially in a class like Snape's, where you just feel like crap all the time because he's making fun of you and he's not helping you, it's really important in this book for Harry to actually do well in potions because it'll help him become an Auror. So I think it's great that Slughorn does this, and I think he's a really great teacher, although I don't agree with Harry using the Half-Blood Prince to help him. Also, I think it's ironic here that the draft of living death is like a sleeping potion. And so if you took the lucky potion and then took the draft of living death, you'd have like a really nice day and a really nice sleep. Wow to me, I feel like I just took some Felix Felicis because Polly is already here. Let's get into the fun facts. Hey, it's Polly or Owl. She's flying in with the fun facts. Thank you so much, Polly, for bringing these Felix Felicis fun facts. Let's get into it. So we learn a lot about Felix Felicis from Professor Slughorn and Harry's first potions class in Half-Blood Prince. Felix Felicis is liquid luck. 
Here's some Latin for you. So Felix in Latin means happy or lucky, and Felicis is from the same root but declined in the genitive case and translates as of luck. So Felix Felicis means luck of luck, lucky luck, or lux luck. Felix Felicis was invented by Zygmunt Budge, and here's a quote from him. My own invention, my masterpiece, the crowning achievement of my career, bottled good fortune, brewed correctly, the drinker of this potion will be lucky in all their endeavors. Felix Felicis is the color of molten gold, and as seen in the class, large drops leap like goldfish above the surface. Here's some color psychology. Gold is the color of success, representing achievement and triumph, like somebody winning a gold medal when they come in first place. It's also the color of wealth and status, emphasizing extravagance and quality. So gold is the perfect color for Felix Felicis. The potion is desperately tricky to make and disastrous to get wrong, but if brewed correctly, the drinker will find that all of their endeavors tend to succeed until the effects of the potion wear off. If someone takes too much Felix Felicis, it causes giddiness, recklessness, and dangerous overconfidence, which is why people don't take it all the time. It may be highly toxic in large quantities, but if taken sparingly and very occasionally, someone will experience the true effects of the potion. Felix Felicis is a banned substance in organized competitions, like sporting events, examinations, and elections. Someone is to take Felix Felicis on an ordinary day and watch how that ordinary day becomes extraordinary. And now let's have an extraordinary discussion by talking all about Felix Felicis. Now it's time to dive into the book topic of the week for tales of magic and mischief. It is lucky time. So in Slughorn's potions class, Harry is the lucky one who did the best at creating the draft of living death, and therefore he won the Felix Felicis. After Slughorn praised Harry's potion making skills and says that he must have Lily's talent, Slughorn says, here you are then, here you are. One bottle of Felix Felicis as promised and use it well. The end of this quote sounds familiar, doesn't it? Use it well is what the notes said when Harry got the invisibility cloak from Dumbledore. This is a very interesting parallel. It really is interesting because Harry does use both potion and cloak well. I mean, he really values the gifts that he's given and works hard to make sure that they don't go to waste. And especially with a potion this powerful, you got to use it in the best circumstance possible. Like, you can't just use it to mess around. I agree, and comparing these two, like, we see with the invisibility cloak that Harry does use it to mess around a lot, but he also uses it for very important things, and as we'll talk about soon with the Felix Felicis, he did have thoughts to use it for not very important things, but then he ends up using it for something very important, so it's interesting how Harry looks at the things that he's given and how he ends up using them. When Harry pockets the potion, he feels delighted at the furious looks on the Slytherin's faces, but he also feels super guilty at Hermione's disappointed expression. Ron is downright dumbfounded and asks Harry how he did such a good job at the potion, and Harry says, got lucky, I suppose. But he only says this because Draco's nearby, but I think it's super funny that he said this, like the word choice is super funny. It is funny, and it's like Ron is the king of quippy remarks, so the fact that Harry has one is pretty good. Yeah, exactly, and as we'll see like in the other sections we're going to talk about, the word lucky gets thrown around so casually, and it's super funny because it's just a joke on the field's voices. It's very clear that Ron and Hermione are super salty. Hermione basically accuses Harry of cheating because it wasn't exactly your own work, was it? But Ron defends Harry, saying that he only followed different directions. Still, do you think Harry rightfully won the Felix Felicis? And also, if you were another student in the class knowing Harry used the Half-Blood Prince's book, how would you feel? I don't think he rightfully won this potion because he basically used someone else's notes. It's like taking a test and using your own notes to get the answers correct like that's technically cheating so if i was another student i'd be really pissed 
because think of it like Hermione does. She works really, really hard. She's naturally gifted. And then to have someone just cheat under her nose and make her lose the chance of winning, that's really devastating for Hermione. I totally agree. And clearly, like, in the class, Hermione's was second best. So if Harry wouldn't have used this book, Hermione would have won the potion. And I honestly think it would have been interesting if JK would have done it that way because knowing Hermione and supporting Harry and being his best friend, if Harry really needed to do something important, like the memory we're going to talk about later, Hermione would absolutely let Harry borrow some of the potion. Like, there's no question in my mind that she would have done that. So I think by doing it this way, instead of having Harry win it like this, that would show a lot about Hermione's character. Yeah, exactly. And why does Harry get to have everything handed to him? That's what bothers me. It's like, oh, he gets the sort of Gryffindor in Chamber of Secrets to help him, you know, kill the Basilisk. And now it's like, oh, he's handed this potion just because he followed instructions. And Snape is obviously a very accomplished potion maker. So when he was talking about like crushing that one thing or whatever, no one would have known that. Only Slughorn would have known that. And so, obviously, Slughorn doesn't know Harry's work ethic, so he believed that he did it. But I'm sure if it was Snape, he'd be like, yeah, no, you didn't win at all. Yeah, I agree. And I think it's really important as a hero in the story to have that strength and that motivation on your own and work for things. And Harry doesn't really do that very often in these books. So that's definitely something that bothers me as well. So in Half-Blood Prince, Harry is made captain of the Gryffindor Quidditch team, with Ron playing as keeper. Harry lies awake one night, thinking about his first match as captain. He thinks about how he wants to beat Malfoy, and how if Ron plays as badly as he has been recently, there's no way Gryffindor will win. If only there was something he could do to make Ron pull himself together, make him play at the top of his form, something that would ensure that Ron had a really good day. And the answer came to Harry in one sudden, glorious stroke of inspiration. Do you have any idea what he's talking about in this moment? Honestly, in first read, no. But as Harry Potter, he's not one to have these brain blasts a lot. So I feel like on first read, I was like, wait, Harry has a brilliant idea. I wonder what this could be. I definitely didn't piece together what it actually is. I definitely didn't either. I was like, oh, that's nice. He's helping a friend. But wait, what's he doing? It seems sort of shady to me when I first read it. So the next morning at breakfast, the Slytherins hiss and boo at the Gryffindor team as they enter the Great Hall. They're so rude. Snakes. On the other hand, the Gryffindor table cheers as Harry and Ron approach. Lavender tells Ron to cheer up and that she knows he'll be brilliant. Aw, she's nice. Ron ignores her, though. That's not very nice. He's in a crappy mood because he knows he's not the best keeper and takes a moody bite of toast. Poor kid is barely eating. How would you feel if you were Ron? I'd be so freaking stressed out. Like, I personally get really bad performance anxiety when I'm performing, like, piano and singing and stuff. So, going out as keeper in this match, knowing that I'm not that great, would literally terrify me. So, I feel Ron here completely. It would terrify me too. I mean, it's like going up in class and having to give a speech. You don't want to be first. You don't want to be last because that's where the most pressure is. But if you're in the middle, you're still nervous. Like I'm nervous all the time when I have to do things. It's like having test anxiety. I have terrible test anxiety. That's why I'm a creative writing major. I'm always the one to volunteer first though for presentations because I want to get it all the way. Yeah, that's why we make a good team because I go second. (laughs) So, Hermione pauses on her way up the table when she sees the boys and asks how they're feeling. Harry says fine and concentrates on handing Ron a glass of pumpkin juice. Ron is just about to drink it when Hermione tells him not to. The boys look up at her and Ron asks why not. Hermione tells Harry that he put something in that drink and says that she sees the bottle in his hand. Harry denies it and stows the bottle in his pocket. Hermione again tells Ron not to drink it, but he does anyway, and says, Stop bossing me around, Hermione. That's such a Ron response. She bends close to Harry and says, He should be expelled for that. I'd never have believed it of you, Harry. 
Harry retorts, asking if she'd confunded anyone lately. Hermione storms away. This is a good retort, as both of them are guilty of breaking rules. But would you have downed this spike drink if you were Ron? Personally, I don't think I would drink anything that I thought would spike with something. But obviously, Harry, like if I was Ron, Harry's my best friend. He would never give me anything bad or try to poison me, so I might have done it. But just in general, drinking something that possibly might have been spiked is not a thing I would do. I agree completely with you. It's like when they tell you in school that if you ever go to a party, never put your drink down because people might spike it. And obviously, Harry's not going to drug you, but at the same time, it's like, I'm super weary when it comes to that stuff. I would have dumped it out and gotten a new drink. As the reader, we don't know what Harry added to the drink. Upon first read, what did you think it was? At this point, I feel like Fios Felicis was an option for me because what else could it be? Yeah, I feel like that too but it also could be like a performance enhancing drug or some kind of potion like that um so i'm you know i didn't know i was really young when i read it the first time so as harry watches hermione go feeling no regret he thinks that hermione had never really understood what a serious business quidditch was ron smacks his lips and then they go down to the stadium harry commenting on how good the weather is Knowing Harry from book one, would you have believed he'd spike someone's drink like this? You know, I mean, I know he is crazy about Quidditch, and as captain, he wants to do a good job, and he wants the team to do a good job. And in certain situations like this, people can do irrational things. So it doesn't really surprise me because Quidditch is involved. It doesn't really surprise me either, especially because of the rivalry between Gryffindor and Slytherin. And Harry's already annoyed at Malfoy at this point, and so he wants to win. But I don't think I'd go to such extremes. Like, I'm a very honest person, so I don't think I'd do it. I personally would never do something like that. Yeah, this doesn't really bode well for me at this point, looking at what Harry's doing. I'm not a happy camper when I read this chapter. But did he do it? Hmm. Let's find out. So while in the changing room before the match between Gryffindor and Slytherin, Ron kind of pieces together what possibly could have happened at breakfast. And he's like, I, you, Ron had dropped his voice. He looked both scared and excited. My drink? My pumpkin juice? You didn't? Harry just raises his eyebrows and completely ignores Ron. What do you think about this little exchange here? As the British would say, he's being so cheeky. (laughs) He's purposely like, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't do anything, but maybe I did because my eyebrows were raised. During the match, Ron does amazing as keeper. And this is surprising to like everyone because he hasn't been doing too hot and he obviously has confidence problems. He saves everything. And is this because of Felix Felicis? Hermione definitely thinks so. After the match, she comes into the changing room to have a word with Harry. Hermione tells Harry that he shouldn't have done it because Slughorn said it's illegal at organized events. Ron's like, what are you gonna do, turn us in? But Harry plays dumb and says that he doesn't know what they're talking about. Hermione goes off and gives it to Harry straight, saying that he spiked Ron's pumpkin juice at breakfast with Felix Felicis. Harry says that he has no idea what she's talking about, but Hermione doesn't believe him, and she explains that this is why everything went right at the match, and that's why Ron saved everything. Harry continues to deny it and pulls out the bottle of Felix Felicis from his jacket pocket and shows both her and Ron that the cork is still sealed with wax. Now, it's unclear in the book whether or not Harry wore his jacket during the match, but if he did... That's so freaking stupid because the bottle could have fallen out. And also, if he would have left his jacket in the changing room, that would have been a stupid move too because anybody could have walked in there and stolen the Felix Felicis right out of the jacket pocket. I mean, it's Harry Potter, so (laughs) that's all I gotta say about that. But no, seriously though, it's like, oh, this potion is probably also worth a lot of money because it's really hard to make, right? So it's like if someone came in there and stolen it, You know, they could have had some, which isn't fair because it was Harry's winnings. Um, It could have fallen out. Like, 
glass bottles can smash people. Like, the cork could still be sealed and everything, but if you drop it from, like, 50 feet in the air, it's gonna break. Like, that's just stupid. He should have just been like, here, I'll take you back to the dormitory and show you the bottle of Felix Felices. But no, he's like, I knew this question was gonna come up, so I'm just gonna keep it here. Imagine if it would have fallen out of his pocket and, like, broke on the ground and the lucky potion went everywhere and everyone's like, lucky potion on the ground, lucky potion on the ground, and everyone's, like, on their hands and knees and legit looking the ground to get some. That's really funny. Harry explains that he pretended to give Ron Felix Felicis when he knew Hermione was looking, and then he tells Ron, You saved everything because you felt lucky. You did it all yourself. Harry's amazing bro move aside, what he says here is super important. He's basically saying that Ron thought he was lucky or that he was given the Felix Felicis and therefore he felt lucky and confident. And this is super important because this shows that feeling lucky and confident in yourself is a choice and it's a mindset. I agree that it is a mindset. I also think it's more of the placebo effect because like you think you took it, but you didn't. And so really Ron just needed someone to tell him, hey, you can do it. And since that wasn't working, Harry's like, well, I need to motivate him some other way. So I think it was actually kind of smart of Harry to do this because it did help them in the match, but at the same time, it just feels sort of shady to me. Like, that's not something I would have done. I would have accepted the fact that we lost and found another way to help my friend. Yeah, I see what you mean, but at the same time, I feel like Harry pretending to do this was actually a clever move because it really helps Ron with his confidence and proves that he can do it by himself. He just needs to believe in himself. I agree. I think it was clever, but I don't think it's something I would have done. All right, I get that. I don't know if I would have done it either, but I understand why Harry did it. Because this is Harry Potter, the plan totally blows up in his face. Once Ron realizes that he wasn't given the Felix Felicis, he rounds on Hermione, telling her that, see, I can save Ghost Hermione without help. But Hermione goes on the defensive, saying that Ron thought he'd be given it too, but Ron isn't having any of this and completely storms out. Even though Hermione didn't really tell him directly that he couldn't save goals, but Ron didn't want to hear any of this. Hermione's feeling super upset, and Harry isn't feeling that great either. If you were Hermione, would you have called Harry out, and how would you feel now knowing that Harry didn't actually give it to Ron? I'm such a goody two-shoes that I feel like I would have called Harry out if I was Hermione, but then as Hermione learning that Harry didn't give it to Ron, I'd feel dumb. But she had a valid point, like, if he did do it, he would have gotten expelled and she was just trying to look out for him. So I can't really blame her. I can't blame her either. I totally would have called Harry out too, and after the fact, I would feel like kind of bad because even though she didn't directly insult Ron's keeping abilities she kind of did in a way so I'd also feel bad that I like completely hurt Ron's feelings. After the golden trio get the note from Hagrid saying that Aragog is dead Hermione suggests for Harry to try to get the memory from Slughorn during potions class because most of the class is going to be in Hogsmeade for their apparition test. Harry's like 57th time lucky, you think? And then a light bulb goes off in Ron's head. Lucky, said Ron suddenly. Harry, that's it. Get lucky. Harry being a little bit slow at times is like, huh? And Ron spelled it out for him, telling him that he should take some of his feelings fully says. And Hermione's like, OMG, that's it. And she wonders why she didn't think of it. So what do you think is the significance here that Ron thought of this, not Hermione? I think the significance here is that Hermione is dubbed the smart one, and so she doesn't think of something, she feels, like, dumb, and the fact that Ron thought of it, and she's like, oh my god, seriously, this guy is not too good in school, and he thought of this before me. She's kind of got that, like, petty moment here going. But honestly, like, Ron's pretty smart, and people don't give him credit, so go Ron. Exactly, and given the whole thing at the match where Ron thought he took it, like obviously the Fierce Felicis is kind of in his head, and he had an indirect experience with it, so it doesn't surprise me that Ron would think of this. Harry says he doesn't know about taking the Fierce Felicis because he's been sort of saving it, and Ron and Hermione are like, WTF Harry, 
why not? Like, what could you possibly be saving this for? Like, this is important. And Harry doesn't answer. And he has, like, these thoughts about how he's been thinking about the tiny golden bottle and that he had plans to use it involving Ginny and Dean breaking up and Ron being happy to see his sister with a new boyfriend. Hermione snaps Harry out of his daydreams and Harry agrees that if he can't get Slughorn to give him the memory dorm patients, that he'll take the field of Felicis later that night and give it another go. It's typical for teenagers to have their priorities all messed up like Harry does here, but Harry agreeing to take the field's felices later if he can't get Slughorn to give it to him in patience really shows his maturity. What do you think about Harry here? I think it does show Harry's maturity here. Hermione is obviously the moral compass and the Captain Obvious kind of saying like, well, why would you waste it on something that trivial? And Harry agreeing to do it for, I guess I would say, a better purpose shows that he's finally realizing, hey, I need to grow up a little bit and, like, take this seriously. Especially because, like, Dumbledore asked him to do this, so why wouldn't he be taking it seriously? Exactly, and one point about that is, like, I feel like during the entire Half-Blood Prince book, every time Dumbledore's like, this is important, or, like, you have to get this memory, it's really important... Harry just, like, thinks other things are superior to that and, like, doesn't do it. So that's kind of frustrating to see him do that, but I'm happy he's finally agreeing to it here. Yeah, I mean, that's a typical teenager thing, but if it was me, I'd be, like, on this right away, and the book would be way shorter. Exactly. So that afternoon in potions class, Harry is not successful in getting the memory, so it is Felix Felicis' time. After dinner, the Golden Trio go up to the common room, and Ron asks Harry if he's going to take the Felix Felicis, and Harry says yes. He says that he won't have to drink it all, though, because it won't take all night. He says he'll take a mouthful because two or three hours should do it. I really like Harry's logic here. What do you think about this? I'm surprised he thought of this. Like... I personally would be like, oh, I want to be lucky all day, I'll take it, but it's nighttime. So the fact that he's logical about this is pretty impressive for Harry Potter, because he's usually just rash and does whatever he thinks he wants to. Ron's like, it's a great feeling when you take it, like you can't do anything wrong, which is absolutely hilarious because Hermione points out that he hasn't taken it. But as we were talking about earlier with thinking you took it and like that feeling you get, Ron confirms that again. Yeah, but I thought I had. Didn't I? Same difference, really. But it's not the same difference, though. It's like he hasn't had this potion. So I think that's hysterical. But at the same time, you're right. Like, you kind of know what being lucky feels like. You know, it's like one day, you know, you're out and about and you meet somebody and then you fall in love. You feel like, oh, that's fate or oh, that's luck. So him going, oh, I guess I knew what it feels like because I did really well in the match. So I don't know if you can really duplicate the feeling of luck in a potion. And as we'll see here, you already feel lucky. The potion just enhances it. I agree with all of that. And I think it's super important that Ron said what he did here because it's encouragement for Harry. Harry's off to do something super important. And even though Ron didn't take it, him saying this is a way of telling Harry, like, you got this. Taking this a great feeling. And it's kind of like a confidence booster for Harry. So the trio come up with a plan that they're going to wait for Slughorn to go back to his office after dinner and then Harry's going to go and ask him. So when the sun sinks to the tips of the trees in the Forbidden Forest, they know it's time and go up to the dormitory. Once they're in the dormitory, Harry gets the rolled up socks in the trunk that have the Felix Felices inside. What do you think of the socks as a hiding place? I think it's quite comical because... When you're a kid, your mom always tells you, oh, put your wallet in your underwear drawer because no one's going to look there because it's like intimate clothing, I guess you would say. And so he's like, oh, I'll do the same thing, but with this potion. And these are some ratty looking socks, I'm pretty sure. So no one's going to like find it there, I don't think. Also, socks stink. You're putting those places in socks and then you're going to drink it. That just grosses me out. Do you think Harry Potter cleans his socks? Well, no. But you could hope that he cleans his socks. Also, how the hell do they do laundry at Hogwarts? That is never specified at all. (laughs) I'm sure the house will do it somehow. 
Yeah, but I wouldn't want a house elf coming up to my dormitory and, like, looking through my stuff and be like, oh, this needs to be laundered. Like, that's weird. <laughs> it's so weird. It is, but, yeah, it is weird. Well, here goes, said Harry, and he raised a little bottle and took a carefully measured gulp. Hermione asks him what it feels like, and Harry doesn't answer for a moment. Slowly but surely, an exhilarating sense of infinite opportunity stole through him. He felt as though he could have done anything, anything at all, and getting the memory from Slughorn suddenly seemed not only possible, but positively easy. I love this description of how Harry feels when he first takes the potion, but I'll admit I'm a little disappointed because we don't get more information like what it tastes like. I feel like it would taste like honey because it's yellow and it's supposed to be sweet. So that's what I think it tastes like. Yeah, I definitely see it as tasting like something super sweet. I don't know if I'd say specifically honey, but just something that really warms you up and it's like super sweet. Oh my god, what if it's butterbeer? <laughs> it tastes like butterbeer. <laughs> Harry announces that he feels excellent and that he's going down to Hagrid's. Ron and Hermione are like, what the hell, that's not the plan. But Harry feels super confident about going down to Hagrid's and he's completely stuck on this, no matter what his friends say. Hermione holds up the Fields Felicis to make sure it's actually Fields Felicis and before she can come up with another name for what this could possibly be, Ron's like essence of insanity, which is absolutely fantastic. But Harry swings his invisibility cloak around his shoulders and laughs at them, which stresses them out even more. But Harry's feeling super confident. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. Or at least Felix does. Even though Harry's feeling super confident, how would you feel if you were Ron and Hermione because Harry's completely ditching the plan? I'd feel kind of dumbfounded, like we worked really hard to help you and now you're just doing whatever you want, which is basically Harry Potter. So I'd feel kind of annoyed, but I'd also feel kind of creeped out that he's giggling like that. It's like, oh, he's high on this potion. We should be worried. It reminds me, too, of, like, the Chamber of Secrets where he's, like, following the parcel tongue voice and he's like, here we are, here we are, and it's just, like, he's doing the same thing. He's like, we're going this way, this is what we're doing. It's like a flashback moment. Yeah, I'd feel super worried, too. But at the same time, I feel like I put a little faith in Harry because this is Felix Felicis, hopefully. Um, and obviously, Slughorn said he had two perfect days and... It's like a gut feeling, you know what I mean? Like, oh, I have this feeling I should do this. Like, we've all experienced that. Granted, we haven't taken this potion. But Harry, all of a sudden, getting a feeling like, I have to go to Hagrid's and this is the place I'm supposed to be. It's like that feeling. And luckily, he follows it. Luckily. So Harry pulls the invisibility cloak over his head and goes down the stairs with Ron and Hermione hurrying along behind him. At the bottom, Harry slips through the open door and Lavender shrieks, asking what Ron was doing up there with her, meaning Hermione. Lavender's pissed because she thought they were alone in the boys' dormitories canoodling. And like, can you blame her though? But it's so funny how possessive she is. I cannot stand Lavender. I'm sorry. She's so annoying. As Harry approaches the portrait hole, Ginny and Dean come through and Harry slips in between them but he brushes up against Jenny. Don't push me, please, Dean, she said, sounding annoyed. You're always doing that. I can get through perfectly well on my own. Typical Jenny responds. This makes me laugh every time. As the portrait swings closed behind Harry, he hears Dean make an angry retort. Notice the luck here for Harry as he leaves unnoticed. I'd be feeling pretty good at this point. His luck continues as he meets no one on his way through the castle. But speaking of sneaking around under the spell of the Lucky Potion, think about how many evil things you could do with the help of Felix Felicis. Why hasn't Voldemort used it? That's a really good question. I honestly think that Voldemort thinks he's invincible and doesn't need help from, like, anybody. Like, yes, he uses his Death Eaters for, like, his bedding and stuff, but... I feel like Voldemort is that independent person, like, I'm by myself, I'm better than everybody else, I can do it myself, I don't need help, and I feel like taking Felix Felicis would kind of insult his thoughts about himself. Yeah, exactly, but he was a really bright student at Hogwarts, so if Slughorn had had this test in Half-Blood Prince, and he was also a teacher at that point in time, 
it wouldn't surprise me if Tom, as a boy, actually took this potion. Like, that would have been pretty cool to watch. Voldemort's life would have been way easier if he would have just taken Felix Felicis the night he went to go kill Harry, because he probably would have succeeded. Granted, I don't know. Like, this is the other question. Is Lily's love protection more powerful than Felix Felicis? I'm guessing yes. So it's interesting to think about what would have happened, but I think Voldemort's arrogance kind of prevents him from being successful. I agree, and I'm also wondering if this potion only works on people who have good intentions. You know, like how the mirror and the stone thing, like he had to get it because he was pure of heart and he had good intentions. Maybe this potion is similar, but I doubt it. Harry didn't know why it was the right thing to do going to Hagrid's. It was as though the potion was illuminating a few steps of the path at a time. He could not see the final destination. He could not see where Slughorn came in. But he knew that he was going the right way to get that memory. How peculiar is that? It's almost like the potion has a mind of its own. Exactly. And it's also kind of eerie because it's like you have a navigation system implanted in you that you don't see the destination, like you just said. And you're just trusting this feeling and this potion to get you to where you want to be. But you don't know the steps you have to take to get there. It almost makes me think that, like, if you brewed this wrong, it would take you on a wild goose chase instead of to your destination. Harry sees that Filch had forgotten to lock the front door and slips out. He then thinks about how it would be pleasant to go through the vegetable patch on the way to Hagrid's, and Harry does so. He sees Slughorn there, talking with Professor Sprout, and lurks behind a low stone wall to listen. It turns out that the plants they're picking are for a group of third years in potions class, where they'll be stewing the plants. After Sprout leaves, Harry reveals himself to Slughorn. I think it's really interesting because we were talking about earlier the whole thing with the use it well and that he uses both the Fields Felicis and Invisibility Cloak well. And we see that here. He's literally using both at the same time for something that's important. Yeah, I agree. But it's also interesting too that the potion nudges him and tells him when to take off the cloak. So he's used it well, and now he's going to use the potion well. Seized with a sudden urge to tell the truth, Harry tells Slughorn that he left the castle for Hagrid. He tells him about Aragog's death and how he's going to keep Hagrid company while he buries the beast. Aragog is an acromantula, and Slughorn says their venom is very valuable. If Aragog just died, the venom might not have dried out, which means Slughorn could get some to sell for about 100 galleons a pint. Now, Harry knows what he has to do. He tells Slughorn to join him and Hagrid and give Aragog a better send-off, meaning he might get an opportunity afterwards to collect the venom. Slughorn tells Harry he'll meet him at Hagrid's. So let's talk about this plan. It seems kind of sleazy and insensitive of Slughorn to go to the burial just to collect the venom. I know Harry needs the memory, but would you invite him to do this? I mean, I wouldn't approve of what Slughorn's doing, but I definitely invite him because that's what the Fields Felicis is telling him to do, and he needs to get the memory, so Slughorn has to be there. I would as well, but then I'd secretly want to steal the venom back from Slughorn so he couldn't sell it. Before they buried Aragog, Slughorn did indeed get his venom by pretending to admire the spider and bending down over it, the slime ball. Slughorn said a few nice words over the body, too, and even kept up a nice conversation with Hagrid as they drank. Felix Felicis nudged Harry not to drink and to refill the bottles as they emptied. He didn't even have to say the incantation aloud, something he'd never done before. Can Felix Felicis make your magic stronger? I don't know if it's necessarily making your magic stronger because doing nonverbal spells isn't necessarily like a strength it's more of like a skill that these wizards have to learn and i mean looking at the luck like he got lucky and this is the first time he was able to do a nonverbal spell i agree i don't think it makes your magic stronger i think it makes you believe in yourself to the point where you can perform the magic so after making extravagant toast hagrid gives slughorn the unicorn tail that he has in his house which is 10 galleons a hair that dumb slime ball is going to get even richer, and he ripped off Hagrid. I do not like Slughorn at all. Slughorn sucks as a person. Like, exactly, he is a slug. <laughs> oh. 
Slucky, Slucky, Slughorn. Slughorn and Hagrid then sing about a dying wizard named Otto. That's so weird. And it reminds Hagrid of Harry's parents dying, and poor Hagrid cries before falling asleep. Like, why did you have to do that, Slughorn? Like, he... Again, he sucks. And then here's what he does afterwards. Slughorn apologizes about his singing, and Harry realizes how oblivious he is, and tells Slughorn why Hagrid was crying. The creep then asks Harry if he remembers the whole thing with his parents dying. Like, why would you ask that? That's terrible. I mean, I'm not going to make the excuse for Slughorn that he's drunk right now because, let's face it, he's just a shitty person. Yeah, he just wants the dirt on everything, even if the gossip is, like, about terrible things. He and Rita Skeeter would be really good friends. I wonder if they are. Maybe he carries the beetle around with him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want the spinoff story where Slughorn and Rita Skeeter are, like, a thing. Oh my god, that's so gross. Plus, he's, like, way older than her, so that's gross. But this leads Harry to tell him he doesn't remember, but he knows the story. He goes into a remorseless rant about the horrors of that day, right up until the part where Voldemort laughed at Lily for pleading to spare Harry. Slughorn tells Harry he's had enough, but Harry pushes, asking if he liked Lily. So here's the strategic genius around this whole thing. He's like... OMG, I'm going to tell you this and just make you start sobbing because you liked this person. It was a good choice on Harry's part to bring up Lily, though. It really is because it hits home for Slughorn. And honestly, at this point, if I was Slughorn, I'd be like, oh my god, I'm so sorry I did this to you and making you recall this memory. I don't imagine anyone who met her wouldn't have liked her. Very brave, very funny. It was the most horrible thing. But you won't help her son, said Harry. She gave me her life, but you won't give me a memory. This is a badass thing he just did. They go back and forth a little bit, Harry assuring Slughorn that there's a purpose to getting the memory. He needs information as the chosen one who has to kill Voldemort. Slughorn agrees he wants to help, but is scared that Voldy will find out he helped Harry. After urging him to be brave like Lily, Slughorn gives Harry the memory. Felix Felicis helps in many ways here, as it provides Harry with the inkling that Slughorn won't remember this in the morning, and shows Harry when to stay silent during their exchange. It's almost like he's a puppet on its strings, with his desires fueling the commands the potion delivers. Slughorn cries, tells Harry he's got her eyes, and asks him not to think too badly of him when he sees the memory, before he too falls asleep. I'm happy that Harry was able to get the memory through taking the Felix Felicis, but still we still see how selfish Slughorn is. Even after this, like when he falls asleep, he's still like, oh, I hope you don't think too badly of me. It's not about you, Slughorn. This is about Harry and him stopping Voldemort. Like, that's what this is about, not you. So stop being selfish. Yeah, but I'd feel kind of sad and embarrassed if I was Slughorn giving him the memory because... He just showed him, like, the biggest mistake of his life. And he's obviously ashamed of it. But that's really no excuse here. I see what you mean, but at the same time, Slughorn had so many years to tell Dumbledore about this and set it right, which would have solved so many problems. But again, he's selfish and he kept it to himself instead of owning up to his mistakes and making it right. So the next morning in Charm's class, the best class to have side conversations in, the Golden Trio cast a Muffliato spell on those nearest to them, and then they talk about what happened the night before. Harry spills the tea about the memory, Voldemort's horcruxes, and how Dumbledore said he'd take Harry along with him if he knows where another one is. Ron is casually waving his wand in the air, and he's making it snow, so Hermione grabs his wrist and lowers his wand, pointing it away from the ceiling. Lavender glares at Hermione, and Ron brushes some of the fake snow off Hermione's shoulder, which causes Lavender to burst into tears. This is when Ron reveals to Harry that they broke up. The reason being what you were talking about before, Jess. So when they were leaving from the dormitory the night before, it appeared that they were in there alone together because Harry was under the invisibility cloak. And that's not all. Hermione also reveals that Ginny and Dean broke up because of the whole portrait hole situation. Ginny was complaining that Dean was always trying to help her through, like she couldn't do it herself. At this point, Flitwick starts heading their way, 
and he tells them a little less talk, a little more action, because they're currently supposed to be turning vinegar into wine, which Hermione is the only one who was able to do this. When Flitwick tells Harry and Ron to give it a go, Harry turns his vinegar to ice and Ron's flask explodes. In short, the conversation is over. But I think it's so important that we see how the Felix Felicis helped Harry and his friends in other areas of their lives. Sure, as I talked about before, Harry wanted to save the Felix Felicis for Ginny, but we see that it worked out in his favor here because Ginny and Dean did break up. And obviously Ron wasn't happy with Lavender, so they're no longer together either. So what do you think about the overarching power of the potion? I like how its effects last for a long time, and think about how this improves Harry's life later on in the series, because Hermione and Ron date, which is good for Harry, because they're always bickering anyway, and now they, like, have some affection for each other, and then it helps Harry because he dates Ginny later on in the series, and then they get married and all that stuff, so, like, it really has far-reaching effects, and you don't realize it until after the whole thing is over, which is really cool. I think that this is a great example of how when you're so focused on one thing, you're not really aware of everything else. So Harry was so focused on getting this memory that he wasn't really comprehending the other things. Sure, he noticed that he got down to Hagrid's without being caught or whatever, but he wasn't absorbing everything happening. And I think for like anybody, whenever they're like so fixated on something, they don't realize the other things happening simultaneously until after the fact. And with this potion, it's so clear that you really do have a perfect day. It's not just a thing you're focusing on, like the day is actually perfect or the time period in which you take the potion is a perfect time. Yeah, and it's interesting too because everything that you do has consequences. So the consequence of him bumping into Ginny was them breaking up. And so, with the Lucky Potion, the consequences are favorable instead of, like, crappy. It's interesting to kind of conclude by saying that if you're the one who took the potion, everything works in your favor, while on the other hand, the other people involved or that you come in contact with can be disadvantaged in some way. So later in the book, Harry wants to know what Draco's doing in the Room of Requirement, and he wants to use Felix Felicis, but Hermione says, Luck can only get you so far, Harry. The situation with Slughorn was different. You always had the ability to persuade him. You just needed to tweak the circumstances a bit. Luck isn't enough to get you through a powerful enchantment, though. Don't go wasting the rest of that potion. You'll need all the luck you can get if Dumbledore takes you along with him. So Hermione makes an interesting point here. Maybe luck is all about chance circumstances, like how he just happened to go through the vegetable patch and see Slughorn. The potion nudged him to do so, but it could have happened all on its own. Also, when you feel lucky or see an opportunity, you play to your strengths, like when Harry persuaded Slughorn to give him the memory by telling him his story. That being said, in most cases, do we really need Felix Felicis? I don't think so, because as we talked about the whole Ron thing, just believing that you're lucky and that you have what it takes is enough to start seeing things work in your favor. But I also want to make a comment about Hermione's point here, because if it's all about circumstances, it wouldn't have hurt if Harry took a very tiny sip for maybe one hour of luck, because he only took a mouthful, so there's still like almost all of it left just to tweak the circumstances that maybe he would have ran into Draco as he was coming out or as he was walking in and could have followed him in. So sure that the potion alone wouldn't have allowed him to get into the room of requirement, but it could have made the circumstances in a way that he was able to find out what Draco was doing. That's true. I mean, luck isn't really a thing, I don't think. It's just you happen to be there at the right time. And so if you work really hard to be there at the right time, then it works out for you. It's like when you go to class, all right, and you get a schedule for college and you say, okay, I'm going to be there early because I know I'm going to miss something if I'm not. That circumstance is tweaked because you made the decision to tweak it. And the potion just makes the decision for you. Right. And I feel like after the experience taking a potion, you know that true luck feeling that maybe it could make you have that mindset stronger on your own in the future. That's a good point. Hermione is right, like you said, that the potion wouldn't repel enchantments, 
and I feel like if Harry would need it for something else, like Dumbledore's mission, that's much more important than snooping on a fellow student. And as we were talking about earlier, you know, Harry has a knack for messing around, and this potion is not to be messed around with because it's powerful, and it takes a lot of time to make, and why would you waste it on something dumb? Ron suggests they can make more, so Harry looks in advanced potion making for the recipe, but it's complicated and will take six months to make, as it has to stew. Honestly, with a potion that powerful, it doesn't surprise me that it would be hard to brew. But if they had the time, do you think Hermione could make it? Oh yeah, if she made Prology's potion in her second year, she can definitely make Felix Voices. I agree. That'd be so cool if she made some. But if you had the recipe, would you attempt to make it? Hell yeah! Are you kidding me? Honestly, for me, I look at the whole list of things that could go wrong first, and then I decide. Because if I could do it wrong and it could kill me, then I'm not going to make it. I don't know. It's a risk for a lucky day. <laughs> Even though it takes six months to make, as soon as the Order of the Phoenix knew that Voldemort was back at the end of book five, why didn't they all make some? Like, I have no idea why, like, everybody wasn't like, yo, let's make Felix Felicis so we're prepared. Like, they apologies potion on stock. Like, why not Felix Felicis? Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, they had Snape on hand. They should have made him make it. Fast forwarding through the book. Before leaving for the cave with Dumbledore, Harry stops by the Gryffindor common room to tell Ron and Hermione where he's going. He says that since Dumbledore won't be there tonight, Malfoy's got a clear shot at whatever he's up to. Giving Hermione the Marauder's map, he tells her to watch Malfoy and Snape and gather up some DA members to help too. Harry says Dumbledore says he's put extra protection in the school. If Snape's involved, he'll know what Dumbledore's protection is and how to avoid it, but he won't be expecting you lot to be on the watch, will he? Before Hermione can protest, he gives Ron the Felix Felicis and tells him to share it between themselves and Ginny. He asks them to say goodbye to Ginny for him, and when Hermione tells him to take the potion, he says, I'll be fine. I'll be with Dumbledore, said Harry. I want to know you lot are okay. Don't look like that, Hermione. I'll see you later. So let's talk about the selfless thing Harry just did, putting his friends first. If you knew you were headed into certain death, even with someone by your side, would you give away that potion? I think it's really important for my friends to have it because God knows what could go down in the castle. I mean, literally the battle of the astronomy tower goes down. I think what I would have done was take some. Like, I would have split it. Like, I would have taken a couple sips to give myself a couple hours of luck and then a lot of it would still be left like half of it would still be left to split it amongst them that's true so if harry took three hours for his thing with slughorn then there'd be nine hours left and if they split it between three people then they'd each have three hours which is pretty much the battle so I guess it would make sense that only three of them took it but if there was a little bit more like 10 hours because we're not sure he could have taken it for two or three hours then I would assume Harry would take some but then again I think it's admirable that he told his friends hey I value you more than myself I'll give it to you yeah I feel like that's the thing about Harry he always thinks about his friends and, like, even with the Swords of Stone that we just talked about in the last episode, he told them, if you want to go back, here's my cloak, go. So he does care about his friends, and I feel like he knows the danger that he's forced to endure, but he still cares about his friends and gives them options and tries to help. Also, Ron has no problem taking the potion from Harry, but Hermione does. What does that say about the two characters? Ron just wants to take some, finally. <laughs> <laughs> but Hermione is obviously the more sensible one and she wants Harry to have all the help he can going off with Dumbledore. I feel like that's a really good reason why the three balance each other out because Harry kind of needs some guidance from Hermione and so does Ron and then Ron is the encourager whereas Hermione is like the devil's advocate so it really works out between the three of them. It turns out Harry was right to give them the potion because the Battle of the Astronomy Tower happened. Afterwards, Harry meets up with Ginny and they both head to the hospital wing. 
Bill is hurt from Greyback's attack. Neville and Flitwick are injured, and one Death Eater is dead. Ginny says, Harry, if we hadn't had your Felix potion, I think we'd all have been killed. But everything seemed to just miss us. We know that Felix Felicis is the luck potion, so it makes sense that all circumstances are favorable, but it's interesting what happened here. Is being lucky synonymous with protection? I think so, because you have to look at what the luck is for, like your purposes for taking the Felix Felicis. In this case, it was for protection, and as we were talking about before with the circumstances, it gives you good circumstances, and in this case, they weren't in the line of a Vata Kedavra or a Deadly Spell. So I think it does connect to protection here. Yeah, because whatever you want, it helps you achieve. That's kind of like the room of requirement in a way. Because you walk past it and you have a desire for what you need and then it does it for you. And then the luck potion is like you have a desire of what you want to achieve and it like tells you how to do it, sort of. Like it nudges you along. Now I'm curious which would be more powerful, the Beards Voices getting into the room of requirement or the room of requirement keeping somebody with Beards Voices out? Yeah, I mean, Hermione does mention that the room of requirement enchantment is more powerful than the potion in our last section. Yeah, like, how would she know that for sure? If I had enough potion to waste, I'd try it. Yeah, exactly. But then again, as we talked about in the map episode, the room's enchantment keeps that off the map, so it might be more powerful than the Fierce Voices. Oh, and gee, just look what I found. What is it? It's a whole bottle of Fierce Felices, and I think this is 24 hours worth, so we both can split it. Oh, yay! So, OMG, what would you do for your 12 hours of luck? I have two answers because I don't know which one I'll go with. So the first answer is I would spend all 12 hours writing an entire novel because you can do that in 12 hours if you have it plotted out. And then hopefully with my luck, it'll be pretty well written and I won't have to do a second draft. On the other hand, I'd also use it to have like a really perfect day. So hanging out with my friends by the pool, traveling somewhere to have a nice nature hike, and also, I would use it to finally talk to that guy I've been crushing on and not strike out. Sounds like a great choice to me. What about you? So I would wake up and I would take the Fearless Felices during breakfast. And then I would write my best song ever. And then I go to the studio to record it. And then I pitch it to somebody and it get picked up by a major artist. So I'd have my first big songwriting cut. And then I'd finally make it in this freaking difficult industry. And then before I went to bed, I hit up a cute guy that I have a crush on. And then we'd start dating. And then I'd go to bed all happy. I think that's a really good way to spend your day. I mean, you could have a hit by, like, the next day, and it would be, like, number one on the charts or something. That'd be really cool. Right? Yep, that's that's the plan. Who wants to go with us real fierce places? Because I think the kind we just took was just water-dyed gold. Ah, uh, boo! Oh, well. Thank you all so much for listening to our episode on Felix Felicis. If you have any comments about this incredible lucky potion, please let us know on social media or leave us a voicemail. We mentioned this in our last episode, but I just want to say this again so that y'all are cool with our new schedule. So instead of coming out with an episode every two weeks, we're coming out with an episode every three weeks now because life is busy and your girls need time to do what we do. So our next episode comes out on April 2nd. So stay tuned for that. Thank you guys again. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to this chapter of the Half-Blood Princesses, a Harry Potter podcast. Hedwood's theme and leaving Hogwarts in this episode were originally composed by John Williams and arranged by me. Until next time, mark this page with a magical bookmark. Thank you.